In today's video, we are going to be talking about anatomy of cranial nerves. This video is sponsored by my friend, Jennifer. Jennifer is a current medical student with a really awesome company. She has a company called Jennifer's Medical Art. And what she does is she creates these anatomy worksheets and these coloring pages that are also based on anatomy so that you can use these worksheets and use these coloring pages to learn material that you need to know for medical school, for USMLE and Comlex board exams. And to be honest, guys, this isn't just for medical students. Any graduate health professional, any undergraduate health professional, even people down in high school and middle school, anybody who's tackling the concept of anatomy can really benefit from Gen Med Art. She's got these really awesome coloring books and worksheets, and you guys have heard me say it before. The way to learn is to actively challenge your brain to engage in a task. So, for example, when you're sitting here listening to me talk, that's a very passive activity. You're not fully engaged. But when you're sitting down, filling out a worksheet, or coloring in an anatomy coloring page, you're actively using visual learning, and you're combining the science behind visual learning, seeing something in front of you with the active process of really encoding those memories into your brain. And those are just some of the reasons why Gen Med Art is an excellent choice for supplementing your studying. This is fun, this isn't boring, and if you use her worksheets or your coloring books, you're just frankly gonna do better in anatomy. She also has some really cool, unique doctor's pins that you can pin up to the lapel on your white coat if you are interested. But guys, Gen Med Art is an awesome company. So check her out, genmedart.com. That's www.genmedart.com. You can also find her at Gen Med Art on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I want to paint an overview of what this video is going to include so that you can sort of have a table of contents in your brain. The first part that I'm going to talk about is the origin of the cranial nerves. That is to say, which part of the brain do the cranial nerves come from? The next part of the video after that, we'll be talking about the foramen or the foramina through which the different cranial nerves pass. And then we will conclude the video by doing some practice questions where you have to actually label the cranial nerves on like a gross anatomical cadaver brain. And a lot of this stuff is very high yield for USMLE and Comlex, but I'm also paying very close attention to things that you would actually have to know if you were taking a medical school or other graduate health school exam. So with that said, let's start with the origin of the different cranial nerves. And before you can go through the origin of the cranial nerves, it's really important to understand the anatomy of the brainstem. And that anatomy is what you see here on this slide. And I've got two pretty good pictures for you. The one on the left is obviously labeled and the one on the right is unlabeled if you wanted to pause the video and you know test yourself to see if you understand the anatomy of the brainstem. But when it comes to the anatomy of the brainstem, what's really important are a couple things. Going downward, you, you start at the top with the midbrain, then you reach the pons, and then you reach the medulla. And those three parts of the brainstem are where all of these cranial nerves, with the exception of two of them, will come from. The other really important thing that I wanted to highlight, especially in this picture that you see on the left here, is the olive. So the olive is this bumpy little protuberance that sits on the medulla. And the olive will be very important for figuring out where certain cranial nerves come from specific to the medullary area. And this will make more sense in just a bit when we get to that part of the lecture. But I want you to really pay attention to what that olive looks like because some cranial nerves will pass in front of it and some will pass behind it. And it's only that little structure, that olive, that will help you figure out what cranial nerve you're looking at. So if you're weak on your brainstem anatomy, I would encourage you to pause the video now, digest this a little bit with you know paying very special attention to midbrain pons and medulla, and then specifically in the medulla, the olive. Once you're comfortable with the anatomy of the brainstem, we can then start to have a conversation about cranial nerve origins. So this picture is an overview of all 12 of the cranial nerves. And we're gonna go through these one at a time and I'm gonna point out where they are originating from because that's a very high yield thing that you need to understand. The first two cranial nerves are cranial nerve one, which is the olfactory nerve, and cranial nerve two, which is the optic nerve. 
And these are the two exceptions to the rule. So by and large, all of the cranial nerves will originate from different parts of the brainstem, except for these guys. So cranial nerve one and cranial nerve two actually originate from the cerebrum. And I've drawn in the red arrow pointing to where the connection is being made from the base or the origin of the cranial nerves. And as you can see in both cases here, it's originating from the cerebrum. So this is not coming from the brainstem. The fact that this is an exception to that rule is what makes these two cranial nerves in particular very, very high yield if they're gonna give you an anatomy question about origin of cranial nerves. So remember, the first two cranial nerves, one and two, come from the cerebrum, not the brainstem. And again, the fact that that's an exception makes this really high yield. Now, as I just said, after you've gotten through one and two, the remaining cranial nerves, so cranial nerves three through 12, they all come from various parts of the brainstem. So from here on out, we're talking about brainstem origins. So let's move on to cranial nerve three, the oculomotor nerve. So I'm pointing to the oculomotor nerve, which is shown here in yellow. And the oculomotor nerve is originating from the midbrain pontine junction. So if you look very specifically where my red arrow is pointing, it is at the area where the midbrain and the pons meet. So the midbrain pontine junction is where cranial nerve three comes from. Moving on to cranial nerve four, the trochlear nerve, which is shown here in that sort of pinkish color. The trochlear nerve comes from the midbrain. So you can see the red arrow is pointing to an area where that nerve kind of wraps down into the midbrain. And what's really high yield to know about the trochlear nerve is that for whatever reason, this cranial nerve has the longest intracranial length. So keep that in mind. Uh, the trochlear nerve is the longest intracranial length. Cranial nerve five is the world famous trigeminal nerve which is shown here in that kind of bluish color. The trigeminal nerve has three different distrib distributing nerves within it, which are known as V1, V2, and V3. V for the Roman numeral five, since this is cranial nerve five. And the trigeminal nerve originates from the pons. And I think that when you look at this picture, that's perhaps the clearest uh, origin, just simply looking at the picture, you see that that big, fat, needy trigeminal nerve comes right from that pons, very clear. Um, and the trigeminal nerve does tend to be really high yield because it's so diffusely involved in so many different processes that it's, it's such a high yield nerve that I would definitely know that the trigeminal nerve comes from the pons. Now we're going to talk about three cranial nerves together. So we've got cranial nerve six, which is the abducens nerve. We have cranial nerve seven, which is the facial nerve, and cranial nerve eight, which is the vestibulocochlear nerve. And all of these nerves are somewhat around each other, anatomically speaking. And they're grouped together because they all have the same origin. So they're all coming from the pontine medullary junction. So in other words, the area where the pons and the medulla come together. And you're not really on the pons, you're not really on the medulla, you're really at that junction where they meet. And if you look at my picture, what I did was I put a black circle or a black ring with a little bit of a red shadow to it around the origin of all three of these nerves. And if I go back just one slide and remove that circle, you can sort of see that these nerves are all coming from that junction. So the, the purple nerve, that's cranial nerve six, the green one, that's seven, and the, the bright pink one, that's cranial nerve eight. And as you see, they're all coming from the same area, the pontine medullary junction. Now, just like all three of these nerves are grouped, we're also gonna talk about the last four. They're all grouped as well. You've got cranial nerve nine, which is the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 10, that's your vagus nerve, cranial nerve 11 is the accessory nerve, and cranial nerve 12 is the hypoglossal nerve. And this is what I was talking about a bit earlier in the video with having to know about the olive. So if you look at these nerves, you can separate them based on whether they're in front of the olive or behind the olive. And cranial nerve nine, 10, and 11, they all come out of the medulla posterior to the olive. So if you look on this diagram and you find that little olive protuberance, which is just behind or deep to the hypoglossal nerve on this image, you see that cranial nerve nine, 10, and 11 originate from the medulla, but behind that olive or posterior to it. And then if you look on the left side of this image, cranial nerve 12, your hypoglossal nerve, 
that comes out of the medulla, but it's anterior to or in front of the olive. So on the image, you can't fully see the bump of the olive because cranial nerve 12 is on top of it or blocking it. But just behind that little yellow web, which is the hypoglossal nerve, that's where your olive is. So again, whether these nerves are coming out of the medulla anterior to or posterior to that little bump is going to determine which cranial nerve they are if you have to select them in a diagram or pin them on a cadaver, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's all 12 of the cranial nerves. And if I was going to give you a beautiful, high-yield, sexy, dirty medicine table to summarize, here is what I would show you. Again, I'm not going to read this to you, but pause the video if you would like to review this and go through the origins of your various cranial nerves. Okay, so part one of the video is down. You now understand the origins of the cranial nerves. Again, particularly high yield, especially in the first two years of medical school when you're taking exams and getting used to the different types of anatomy questions that will come up. What's probably just as high yield in the first two years of medical school and even way, way, way more high yield for USMLE and Comlex are the different foramina that these cranial nerves were passed, will pass through. So a foramen is just a hole or a canal through which some anatomical part will pass. And on the base of the skull, we've got tons of uh, little holes and little canals. So you have tons of foramina and you can see them on this diagram. And for whatever reason, for anatomy questions, it's really high yield to know which cranial nerve passes through which hole. And that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna use this diagram, which is already labeled as to what all of the different holes are, and I'm going to go through the cranial nerves one at a time, showing you which one passes through which hole. So we'll start, of course, with cranial nerve one, the olfactory nerve that passes through the cribriform plate. Cranial nerve two, the optic nerve that passes through the optic canal. And that's kind of easy to remember because it's the optic nerve and it goes through the optic canal. Cranial nerve 3, 4, and V1 and 6 all go through the superior orbital fissure. Now, I'm going to pause for a second. As you'll see, talking about the foramina through which the cranial nerves pass, it's not you can't just say the trigeminal nerve goes through the superior orbital fissure. The correct and more correct way to say it is that the V1 distribution of the trigeminal nerve goes through the superior orbital fissure. And of course, V2 and V3, the other distributions of the trigeminal nerve will also go through other holes at the base of the skull. And we'll talk about those in just a second. But superior orbital fissure is 3, 4, V1, and 6. Now, V2, the second distribution of the trigeminal nerve, that's going to pass through the foramen rotundum, shown here on the left side of this image. Cranial nerve uh, V3, the third distribution of the trigeminal nerve, that's going to pass through the foramen ovale. Okay, so at this point, we've talked about where all three parts of the trigeminal nerve, V1, V2, and V3, which foramina they're passing through. And again, just to really summarize and make your brain hear it for the fourth time, V1 goes through the superior orbital fissure, V2 goes through the foramen rotundum, and V3 goes through the foramen ovale. Now let's talk about cranial nerve 7 and 8. So facial and vestibulocochlear nerve will both go through the acoustic meatus. Cranial nerve 9, 10, and 11, the glossopharyngeal, the vagus, and the accessory will all go through the jugular foramen. And then the hypoglossal nerve, which is cranial nerve 12, will go through the hypoglossal canal, which is also quite easy to memorize because it's the hypoglossal nerve going through the hypoglossal canal. So I know what you're thinking. I need a sexy, dirty medicine table. And here you are. This is your summary of all of the cranial nerves and the foramen or the foramina, if you want to pluralize it, through which they pass. And I want to pause on this slide for a second to just point out a couple things and maybe give you a mnemonic or two. So regarding the trigeminal nerve, V1, V2, and V3, the way that you can memorize them to remember the order and the, the foramina through which they pass is by saying fro, F-R-O, fro. So the trigeminal fro. The first one is the fissure, the second one's the rotundum, and the third one is the ovale. So fro, fissure, rotundum, ovale. That always helped me memorize and remember the order and the, the foramina through which the trigeminal distributions will pass.
Um, some, some other things to remember is that if you look at cranial nerve three, four, and six, they're all going through the superior orbital fissure in addition to V1, which we just talked about. And that's kind of easy to remember because cranial nerves three, four, and six are all involved in helping with movement of the eyeball. And the name of the hole is the superior orbital fissure. So you know it's around the eye because it has orbital in the name. So all of the cranial nerves that control the movement of the eye are all going through the only foramina that has something to do with the eye in the name. So kind of easy to remember. Uh, Vestibulocochlear nerve obviously involved in a lot of different processes regarding our ability to hear, and therefore it goes through the internal acoustic meatus. So the only, uh, the only name that has acoustic in it, which should cue you into that it's got something to do with hearing, obviously vestibulocochlear will pass through that uh, foramen. The other thing that I want to help you memorize are the cranial nerves that go through the jugular foramen. So cranial nerve 9, 10, and 11, glossopharyngeal, vagus, and accessory, they're all going through the jugular foramen. And the way that I always memorized that was by rewriting jugular foramen as jugular voramen, and that G for glossopharyngeal, V for vagus, and A for accessory. Okay, so that's all the most mostly high yield information that you need to know regarding the different uh, canals through which the cranial nerves are passing. We've now concluded part two of the video and let's wrap up with part three and do a little rapid review practice question, um, pin the cranial nerve anatomy style. So first question, identify the oculomotor nerve. Pause the video if you want some more time to think about it but your ocular motor nerve is right there where the orange arrow is pointing. Question two, identify the optic nerve. Pause the video if you need more time and the optic nerve is right there where the orange arrow is pointing. Question three, identify the abducens nerve. Pause the video if you would like more time and the abducens nerve is right there. Question four, identify the olfactory nerve. Pause the video if you would like more time. This is actually the easiest one I could have given you. The olfactory nerve is that big tall one at the very top. It's the first cranial nerve. It's usually at the top uh, of this underside image of the brain. Question five, identify the facial nerve. The facial nerve is right there where the orange arrow is pointing. It's that very tiny nerve. It's very, very close to some other nerves around it. So you really got to study your anatomy to be able to differentiate between these. Um, but that's the facial nerve. Question six, identify the hypoglossal nerve. Pause the video if you would like more time. And the hypoglossal nerve is right there where the orange arrow is pointing. Remember the hypoglossal nerve is the one that comes out of the medulla, but it's anterior to the olive. So it's the one like closest to you when you look down on this image, when you're looking at the medulla. I hope that those anatomy questions were somewhat useful to you. If you're a first year medical student, you're gonna be ripping your hair out in anatomy lab, trying to get these cranial nerves correct on the, you know, the, the questions where they make you identify what's pinned to what cranial nerve. But it's very important to know on USMLE and Comlex, they do occasionally show you diagrams that you need to pick, like, you know, what, what is this pointing to or what does A in the picture represent? So anatomy is totally not off the table. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't need to know it because you absolutely do. But again, today's video was the cranial nerve anatomy. I hope it was useful to you. Just to summarize, what should you know from this video? The origin of the cranial nerves, the foramina through which the cranial nerves pass, and then be able to tag or identify the different cranial nerves on a gross image or on a cadaver. Good luck.